In this video, we're going to talk about some common sexually transmitted infections and then we'll focus on how to prevent these infections from spreading. Before we begin, what is a sexually transmitted infection? A sexually transmitted infection is an infection that spreads through the transfer of body fluids. And body fluids can be anything that is present inside the body like blood, semen, etc. Now, through the act of unprotected sexual encounters, these body fluids are transferred from one person to another. And that is one method by which these infections can spread. There are other modes by which these infections spread which don't involve sexual encounters at all. And they include the unsanitary practice of sharing needles. This is often seen in the case of intravenous drug abusers and in the case of people who get tattoos from shady tattoo parlors. These infections can also spread from the mother to the baby, from the infected mother to the baby through the placenta or breast milk. Now these infections, they are commonly called STIs, sexually transmitted infections, STDs or sexually transmitted diseases or venereal diseases or VDs. So there are three major causative agents that cause these infections. They are bacterial, viral and parasitic. In this video, we're going to focus on bacterial and viral sexually transmitted diseases. First, let's start with bacterial STIs. A common bacterial STI is chlamydia that is caused by the bacterium chlamydia trachomatis. Now, chlamydia is quite a tricky infection because at its early stages, there are no symptoms. As the disease progresses, some symptoms like genital discharge, Pain during urination can occur, but this is only after a while after the infection has taken some time to grow inside the body. If left untreated, chlamydia can cause infertility, especially in women, as it affects the pelvis, causing pelvic inflammatory diseases. Now, one way to treat chlamydia is by antibiotics. So, after administering a course of antibiotics, chlamydia can be 100% treated. Usually, bacterial STDs are 100% curable with the help of antibiotics, but viral infections are not. Another common bacterial STI is gonorrhea, which is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. Now, this bacterium usually lives in the mucous membranes in the urethra, vagina, mouth and eyes. And the primary symptoms occur 2 to 5 days after infections. And the primary symptoms include swollen urethra and testicles in men and lower abdominal pain in women. Most don't show symptoms initially, but as the primary symptoms worsen, as the infection becomes secondary, then these symptoms like genital itching or discharge, pain during urination and pain during intercourse can be seen. Again, gonorrhea can also be treated with the help of antibiotics. Another bacterial infection is syphilis that is caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum. Now, syphilis, if left untreated, is quite fatal. It also has some primary symptoms that occur 2-6 to six weeks after infection. They include skin lesions or ulcerations, which are quite painless. They don't cause any itching or anything, but you get these ulcerations in and around your genital areas. Secondary infection begins 4 to 10 weeks after infection, causing reddish pink rashes. That is also non-itchy, it doesn't itch much. But these rashes can be found in a lot of places on the body like the trunk, hands, legs and even the palms. Syphilis can also be cured with the help of antibiotics. With this, let's move on to some common viral STIs. One common viral STI is Hepatitis B caused by the Hepatitis B virus. Now, hepatitis B is a sexually transmitted infection. There are other types of hepatitis like hepatitis A and C that are not sexually transmitted, that are transmitted through other routes. Hepatitis B doesn't present much symptoms initially. So, there are two types of hepatitis infections, acute and chronic. Initially, the infection begins in the acute stage and then it can progress to the chronic stage. During the acute stage, there is body ache, fever and then that can lead to jaundice or the yellowish coloration of the skin. There can be mild abdominal pain as well. As the infection becomes chronic, it can lead to cirrhosis of the liver and even liver cancer. A good thing about hepatitis B is that there is a vaccine to prevent the transmission of hepatitis B. 
even though it is incurable like i said viral stis are incurable there is no proper cure as of now to cure these infections but hepatitis b can be prevented with the help of a vaccine which is usually administered in the childhood itself another common viral infection that can be prevented with the help of vaccine is the human papilloma virus or the hpv infection there is a vaccine specifically designed for women to prevent hpv infection because in women hpv infection can lead to the occurrence of cervical cancer next we'll move on to herpes which is caused by the herpes simplex virus now initially the herpes simplex virus presents symptoms like sores or blisters in genital areas tingling pain swollen lymph nodes and a mild fever but this infection can spread to a lot of other regions like the eyes even the brain and the nervous system and when it spreads through the brain and nervous system it becomes quite fatal and like other viral stis of course there is no cure for herpes either Another common viral STI is HIV or the human immunodeficiency virus. Now this virus is quite dangerous because it affects the T cells or the T lymphocytes of our immune system. It attacks those cells and destroys them causing the immune system to weaken in the body. As the immune system weakens it can lead to persistent infections like recurring repeating infections that just don't go away because of which there is weight loss as well. Now this leads to a lot of opportunistic infections or infections that would usually be prevented from occurring by the immune system but because the immune system is weakened those opportunistic infections cause havoc in the body and ultimately that can lead to acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or aids in which case the immune system has totally collapsed and the person is extremely vulnerable to a lot of infections like tuberculosis cancer etc As of now there is no cure or vaccine for HIV either but these infections these viral infections even though they are incurable they can be treated to an extent their symptoms can be managed to an extent with the help of antiviral drugs now that we've learnt about different types of STIs let's move on to how you can prevent sexually transmitted infections from occurring or how you can prevent their spreading The best method to prevent sexually transmitted infections from spreading is the use of condoms during intercourse that is having protected intercourse that's what protected or unprotected means protected is by the use of condoms unprotected means without condoms or using other forms of birth control condoms are the only form of birth control that prevent pregnancies and the transmission of STDs Now here's a statistic I took from NCBI about how efficient condoms are against preventing the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases and you can see here in the case of HIV gonorrhea and syphilis that condoms are almost 90% or more than 90% effective in preventing the transmission of diseases which is quite great because the incidence of these diseases or the number of people infected with these diseases is increasing in the world and it's very important to control the spread of those diseases to protect the people apart from using condoms to prevent sexually transmitted infections other methods to prevent their transmission include avoiding intercourse with multiple partners or unknown people and of course visiting healthcare providers for immediate testing if you or anybody around you are experiencing any of the symptoms that i mentioned before now it's very important to do this to go as early as possible because many of the stds or stis they don't present symptoms immediately and in the meanwhile the disease could be spreading to others because the person who having the disease doesn't know that they have the disease yet so it's very important to go for immediate testing if you're suspicious that you have contracted a sexually transmitted infection this way you can start treatment as early as possible and you can prevent the spread to other people